Everyone likes birds. Look at this guy. Ain't he adorable? Look at this guy. He looks like he could pick me up and then drop me over a rock somewhere in Oregon and eat my corpse. Cool. So Wingspan is a game that's become very popular over the last couple of years among the board game enthusiasts. But if you're someone who maybe has only played like the classics, Clue, or Uno, you might not have caught wind yet of this beautiful, beautiful game. Wingspan is an engine building card game where you play an avid bird watcher who's trying to attract birds, a variety of them, to their nature reserve. All while you're trying to compete with the other players to win ever-changing public goals and also simultaneously trying to complete your secret private goals which can reward you big during the scoring phase. So maybe you've only ever played Monopoly back when you were a little kid at your grandmother's house and after maybe the ninth hour of pass and go everyone was really really bored and you just handed the victory over to your grandma because she was really excited to play it and everyone else was very bored and sick and tired of it. In which case, you're probably asking, what's an engine building card game? Well, an engine builder, simply put, is a game that starts you with a very basic, bare set of simple moves which you can then build on and create more complex moves using the previous moves and thus kind of chaining together an engine of successful things that will reward you as you continue going through the game. If you've played a lot of video games, most modern ones have some type of engine building mechanic. So what's the engine you're building in Wingspan? Well, let's open the box, see what's in there, and then go from there. The game comes with 170 bird cards, 26 bonus cards, 16 automa cards for solo playing, we'll get to that, 103 food tokens of 5 varieties, 75 adorable eggs, five wooden dice that are so pleasing to just hold in your hands, five player mats, one bird feeding dice tower that you must construct, a card holder and display tray, a gold mat, eight gold tiles to determine what your objectives are for the game, a classic first player token that no one ever uses, 40 action cubes of five different colors, a score pad, and three rule books, which is a number that might seem daunting, but Stay with me, this game plays so simply and smoothly once you get going. After you give everyone their required items, you then shuffle your eight double-sided gold tiles and place one down in each round section. That's right, this game is played in four rounds and also, depending on the atmosphere you're going for, you can use the less competitive blue side of the gold mat which awards players up to five of their successes during a round regardless of other players, or the more competitive green side which awards your placement compared to other players and can offer sharp gains and points that will play more of a role in actually tallying up the scores at the end of the game. So then players are dealt five bird cards and then five of each of the food tokens. And then the decision making starts before the first round even begins. You'll need to decide which birds to keep, but for every bird you keep, you must give up one of your newly acquired food tokens. So now you're stuck. Do you get rid of your says Phoebe? since the first round is scored on how many birds you have in the grassland section, but he costs three invertebrates to play, and it's going to be difficult to recoup that food if you're going to have to get rid of so much of your starting supply. But there's no way you can get rid of your American Crow, because he lives in the nest you need to score points for round four, and there's no guarantee that the cards you pull later will have that nest. But you gotta keep your Black Vulture, because his ability is every time your opponent tucks a card, you get to choose a food from the bird feeder without using a turn. Why are birds so complicated? Let's not even get started on the fact that your blue-gray gnat catcher is a bird you would probably normally be willing to give up, except one of your two bonus cards is based on how many birds you play that have a color in their name, and now you really don't know what to do, and decisions are hard, and everyone said that this game would be really relaxing and chill, so why do I want to bang my head through the table. No fear though because honestly I find that the very first decision deciding which birds and which food tokens to keep is probably the hardest decision in the entire game and we haven't even got started yet. The rest of the game requires sacrifices and decisions to be sure but that initial choice of deciding to play for the now or to play for the future or to play for the definitive or to play for the lucky draw is what makes this game so exciting and that very first decision you make could really determine how your game plays out going forward. So yes, these are your goal tiles and these are your objectives for each of the four rounds you will play. You reach these rounds through one of the four actions you are permitted to take on your turn. 
You can either play a bird, gain food, lay eggs, or draw bird cards. When you play a bird, you must pay its food cost and place it in an acceptable habitat. Or maybe later on in the game, if you're placing them in the second column, you will have to pay an egg cost as well. That's the end of that turn. Or you could choose to gain food, which the amount is dictated by the amount of birds you have already placed in the forest region. So with one bird already there, you could gain one food with the option of exchanging a bird card for a second food token. But wait, you don't get any food token, and you don't even get to roll a die for which food token you take. Instead, the pre-rolled dice sitting in the bird tower are your choices for which food to take. So for example, there is no fruit currently showing on the dice tray, and so you needed fruit. Then you're shit out of luck. Until the dice tray has been picked completely empty throughout the game, and then all the dice will be re-rolled. Thirdly, you can lay eggs, which in this case could play a major role for scoring in rounds 2, 3, and 4, but also will help you play birds later on in the 2nd through 4th columns because you can only play a bird in the leftmost column available in their respective habitat. But don't forget to pay attention to the egg limit on your cards because you cannot play more eggs on a specific card than that bird is allowed to carry. Or maybe your hand is getting low on birds, or maybe of the three face-up cards you can choose from, one of them is the perfect bird you need to complete your goal. So you choose to draw bird cards, and in this imaginary scenario, you are allowed to pull two cards, but the other two birds are completely useless to your current objective. So you decide to take a chance and pull a face-down card from the deck and hope for the best. That is, until two turns later, when you realize that you've been so blinded by the public goal you completely forgot about your secret goal of collecting birds with colors in their name. And oh, would you look at that, a f***ing yellow rumped warbler is sitting right there the whole time. And then there are two other major components to this game. Every time you either gain food, lay eggs, or draw bird cards, you have then activated that row of birds. And that means any birds with the applicable when activated abilities can then be used to reap the benefits of such as uh, gaining extra food, or caching food, or tucking prey on certain birds, both of which count one point during the final scoring, or even moving that bird to another habitat that they are able to live in. You can really chain together some killer combos to get like three or four turns worth of work done in a single turn. Lastly, these action cubes. They are used to document your turns and to keep score of the rounds. You start with eight cubes, and so round one has eight turns. But once round two begins, you will use one of your cubes to track your score from round one. And so every round you lose a turn and now you don't have the same wiggle room for missing an opportunity that you would have had previously because once you get to round four, you only have five turns. After the last round is over, you tally up your scores. These are based on your round placement, completion of your secret bonus objective, points for each bird's score, that's the feathers, face up on your map, one point for each egg in play, each food token cached, and each card tucked. A winner is declared and then you inevitably decide to play another game of this addictive bird explosion thingy. Overall, this game is a really great laid back experience because unlike a lot of the other games in a similar vein, it doesn't have nearly as many sabotaging or stealing components. Much of what you do feels like it's in its own world and you're way more concerned about making that successful than you are hurting the other players, which is different than most board games of this nature. Get it? <laughs> nature? <laughs> because, because the birds. Subscribe, you son of a bitch! The game even includes an option to play against an AI with difficulty settings called the Atoma. In the event you don't have any friends to play with at the moment and you're just in a really birdie birdie mood, that's pretty cool. The game is gorgeous and though the whole of the game can probably look like a lot for most players who are not too familiar with any board games outside of the classics, it actually becomes very simple 
and apparent after just one or two playthroughs. Which, by the way, the game does include a swift start option, which essentially allows the player to follow a recommended turn action to let them actually play out the game and learn it, if simply reading the rules doesn't click very well with that player. It's educational in a way that doesn't make you feel stupid or it feels like it's treating like a child, with all these nests and information about these eggs. I mean, they correspond to how the bird actually functions in real life. There's these little anecdote notes at the bottom, fun facts about each bird, and a little uh, geography section to let you know where they're from. This game can usually be played in under an hour in most instances. Wingspan is some of the most fun I've had playing a game really ever. It's a great game to introduce to new people because even though there is some complexity to it, it's easy for them to pick up on while still never compromising on the amount of decisions and objectives this game has. And the option to play a more competitive game or more laid back game is such a welcome addition because sometimes you want very different experiences depending on what group of family or friends you're playing with. And there's just something about realizing that you can accomplish this long term objective game plan with just the perfect amount of turns. It's so satisfying because at the end of the day your objective is to be the best bird watcher not to make other players worse bird watchers. This game is really popular among enthusiasts and at the 60 to 70 dollar price range which it usually has though I have seen it go on sale for as cheap as 45 dollars on Amazon I think this game is a must buy. This game is absolutely a must buy because of its uh, aesthetic, its serenity, its theme and most importantly, its ability to entertain veteran players while still being very fun for newbie players, like your grandma. Sorry, Gma, no Monopoly today. I wanna to keep my sanity. Did you like this video? I hope so, you made it to the end. In which case, you should consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and checking out our website, butthefuture.com. I've been Jordan, and never forget, refuse to change.